I would say that all of my work is rooted in the landscape. I live in the Sierra Nevada mountains. I am outside almost every day. You know, I spend time out into the mountains and wilderness and do a lot of backcountry activities. And I've done that from a young age. It's just part of my life. My relationship with the landscape, with different environments, uh, plays a pivotal role in, in my sanity, really. And I have, I don't know, I just have an innate need to spend time in these places that are much larger than us, much larger than me. They teach you a lot of life lessons and, you know, they take a long time to get to know. And they're just very, very special to me. And I've been fortunate enough to travel all over the world and throughout the United States and spend a lot of time in, in pretty wild places. So pretty remote, you know, they take you out of the picture in many ways and you realize that we're really really tiny compared to our own history and the earth's history and um that's always been a fixture for me and i think that my artwork tries to convey the special nature of these places but also look at them in a unique way that maybe someone else hasn't seen them before and so you know say i'll paint a particular range of the sierra nevada and it's blue or purple or some color that someone might not associate with a mountain range. And then my work tends to be overlapping. And so what I'm trying to convey is different ways of seeing the landscape that, you know, we can take a landscape photograph and it depicts the reality of the place in front of us. But artwork enables you to change the scene so that you can trick your mind to look at it a different way and think about it differently. And that's what I'm trying to do is is tell people about these places why they're important and why we should look at them differently i never formally studied art i mean i've taken a bunch of different art classes kind of after the fact but uh i grew up in um with family members who are artists and my brother who's an exceptional artist he studied art in college etc he and i do a lot of these backcountry wilderness trips together. And he would always bring a small watercolor kit with him to paint with wherever we went because it's very transportable. It's easy to, you know, carry around stuff in a backpack or whatever. And um, so whenever we go on these trips, we would just paint. We would have downtime, whatever we're doing, and we would paint little, you know, like postcard size paintings of the landscapes we were in. And so that's what, uh, that's what really got me started painting was just kind of doing these landscape sketches, uh, clean air. And um, so I kind of, I didn't choose it. It kind of, you know, it just was there and available and it's something that I, I like to do. And then I started doing more and more of it. So now I always carry a watercolor kit with me um, wherever I go and paint, you know, in situ. And it's really a luxury. For me, you know, uh, to be able to spend time away from, you know, kind of the craziness of life uh, and to, it's, you know, it's kind of a form of meditation where the outside world disappears and you don't think and you just create and you lose yourself for 15 minutes, three hours, weeks, whatever it is. And to be able to do that is an amazing experience and I do consider it a, a vital luxury. I try to draw with the line that is created during the evaporation process. And so I'll have these hard edges that define say like a, a specific ridge line of a mountain range. I don't draw that with a different pen or anything like that. That's part of the process. I, use my brush and create an edge. And due to the statistical properties of how the pigment distributes in the water as it's evaporating, it creates that edge, right? And it's called the Poisson distribution, which is a random normal distribution, okay? So it gets into like pretty statistical, I mean, pretty, you know, kind of advanced statistical methods. I find that pretty fascinating. Nobody ever asked me about that, but it's what makes it work. It's what makes my process what it is. And it's this, you know, someone's named it. We were humans and we investigated it and we 
you know, guy from France named Poisson named it, right? And, but those sorts of natural processes where they take over as part of your work and they're an integral part of your work are fascinating to me because I don't have control over everything. Even though it's hard for me to accept, I, I try to embrace it and use it. And, you know, it helps with a lot of different problems when you let nature take over. <laughs>